Hello, Steve Hoopman here at the Rhododendron Species Botanical Garden. We're out in the Big Leaf Garden today and I'm hopefully going to clear up some confusion about a few species or possibly confuse you even further. Today we're going to look at the Rex Complex. You see behind me our largest rhododendron in the entire garden, which is Rhododendron Rex subspecies Fictolactium. Most people just call it Fictolactium. That's an original plant from the mid-1970s, probably about 30 feet tall now and still going strong. Okay, so today we're going to discuss what is known in biology or botany as a cline. This is a uh, way to describe species that are closely related to each other that merge into each other as their ranges overlap. So let's say, for instance, Fictolactium and Rhododendron rex subspecies rex are very closely related, and on the far eastern end of the range, which is uh, southwestern Sichuan, northeastern Yunnan, you have true rex subspecies rex. As you move west toward the Himalaya, it starts merging into or fading into rex subspecies Fictolactium. That's part of the climb. As you continue to keep moving west into western Yunnan and eastern Himalayas, then Fictolactium merges into Arizelum, which is a distinct thing. You would never compare Arizelum on the far western end of its range with Rex subspecies Rex on the far eastern end of the range, but there are intermediates through the entire range through all those different populations. So we'll start with Fictolactium, which you see here. Fictolactium is one of the hardiest of the big leaves, well-known species, beautiful foliage with a really nice dark indumentum you see here. Kind of a, a fuzzy orange-brown. Uh, Rhododendron Fictolactium can have leaves that are a bit larger but they're not as large as Rex, which we'll look at shortly. And Rhododendron Rex subspecies Rex has a much paler indumentum, larger leaves, but the flowers are the reverse. So Fictolactium generally has white, maybe flushed pink with a purple blotch and smaller flowers, whereas Rex subspecies Rex has a much larger inflorescence with larger flowers that are more colorful, generally pink, to a rose lavender or even almost uh, rose purple. All right, now we're going to head to the Rex subspecies Rex collection. Uh, we've just looked at Fictolactium, which has the smaller leaves with the darker indumentum but the paler flowers. And up ahead, we have the beautiful Rex subspecies Rex. So here, as I mentioned, the leaves are much larger than in subspecies Fictolactium and you have a paler indumentum which can be kind of a buff brown to a, a gray even but not that deep rufous brown as we saw in Fictolactium and as you can see the flowers are much more magnificent with a lot more color and a larger size. It really is a spectacular plant. This is a plant that's grown from seed that I collected on my first trip to China in 1995. So this plant is now 25 years old and you can see it's blooming beautifully now and we didn't know Rex looked like this back then. So we're going to move over to uh, what we used to grow as Rex and discuss the cline once more. But as you can see all around are these very colorful true Rex subspecies Rex. This is another specimen from that same seed collection back in 1995, uh, which you can see has turned into a beautiful specimen. This is the best year for flowers, spectacular flowers uh, on all the Rex. And again, that's a, one of the hardier species of big leaf uh, for not all rhododendron climates, climates, but it's much hardier than Cynobrande or Macadianum, for example. A, a very beautiful plant. Here you can see another form, which is just opening. Which is a very nice candy stripe flower. Just a stunning thing. Now we will move over to the old rock and kingdom ward collections of Rex. which are what we used to think of as Rex subspecies Rex. But Rock and Kingdon Ward collected, made their collections uh, in the zone where subspecies Rex was transitioning into subspecies Fictolactia. We didn't realize that then. So that until 1995, uh, this is what we considered to be a true Rex. And you can see it has much smaller leaves with an indumentum that is intermediate between Fictolactium and Rex, as it should be, and flowers that are quite nice, but not with as 
with not as much color. But again, that's because this is part of that cline where uh, on the far eastern end, you get the pure rex, this guy with the big leaves and the dark flowers. And as you're moving west, it starts turning into Fictolactium. And as you keep moving west, then you get much smaller leaves with the darker indumentum, smaller, paler flowers. So this is Rex Quartz, which is an old rock collection. And uh, again, for years, everybody thought that's what Rex subspecies Rex looks like. Now we know better. The true Rex subspecies Rex is a much more spectacular plant. Uh, with really beautiful flowers. So, that's a, again, that's part of the climb. And if you continue to go west toward the Himalaya, then you transition into Arizilum, which we will maybe go look at that. Another example, this is uh, my collection from 95 with the really dark flowers. That's from, from southeastern Sichuan, uh, on the far eastern end of the range of Rex subspecies Rex. In 1994, a collection was made in Sichuan, but in southwestern Sichuan, so going more toward where you start transitioning into Rex subspecies Fectolactium. And that is growing right here. And here again you see a very beautiful plant, but with the white, the paler flowers, and now smaller leaves than what we were seeing on the southeastern Sichuan species. So you're going toward Fectolactium, but I would still call this Rex subspecies Rex. But again, you see the variation between, as you get close to Fictolactium, the smaller leaves of the darker indumentum, and then on the far eastern end of the range, the really nice deep pink. All beautiful plants, of course. These have a very nice purple speckling inside, but you can see even the inflorescence is quite different in how it's poised and how it's held. Okay, now we're continuing that climb going from east to west. We're transitioning from Rex subspecies Fictolactium to Arizilum a fairly well-known species, Arizilum, tends to be at uh, fairly high altitudes for uh, a big leaf rhododendron, relatively hardy, probably not as hardy as Fictolactium or Rex itself, but uh, still a beautiful plant, less tree-like, and it'll grow broader than tall, uh, although this isn't a good example of that, but uh, Arizilum's easily distinguished by the overlapping bud scales, and it has a much thicker, fuzzier, dark reddish brown indumentum and the leaf blade tapers here you can see it quite clearly that's classic arizilum very distinct with the beautiful really dense fuzzy indumentum and as you can see this one's blooming this is from southern sichuan as well that is a bit atypical for arizilum actually they range from a really good deep rose purple to yellow to pink to white or cream as well obviously this is a, actually a really good white one uh, but that's fairly unusual and Arizilum tends to bloom much earlier than subspecies Fictolactium or subspecies Rex and again does not get as tall we'll look at a better example around the corner here which is an old George Forrest collection uh, again with sort of this was a fairly good pinky purple when it emerged but it fades to a kind of a creamy white and again the classic leaf shape on the Arizilum. These are covered with uh, dug fir pollen right now. We haven't had very much rain and so everything's just covered with yellow pollen which really takes away from the appearance but that's classic Arizilum and that leaf shape. Tapering slightly rounded at the base and also the other thing that will distinguish Arizilum is that it has smooth peeling bark, as you can see here. The other two species, Fictolactium and Rex itself, do not have that. They have very typical rough rhododendron bark. Arizilum does have the smooth peeling bark. It comes from a much wetter environment. Uh, you're getting toward the eastern, the Salween and the eastern Himalaya where you get a lot more precipitation during the growing season. And many species there have this exfoliating smooth bark so that they can shed moss and thus not grow epiphytes on their branches and trunks, which adds to the weight, which causes damage. If you're in a drier climate, like Rex and Pictolectium, you don't need that. You're not going to get epiphytes anyway, but where it rains every day through the growing season, such as where Arizilum occurs, 
you don't necessarily want big mats of moss and orchids and blueberries and little baby roadies growing on your branches. You're going to sustain a lot of damage that way. Next, we'll go look at Coriaceum, which is the last element in the Rex complex. And now we're looking at a species that is much more rarely grown in cultivation than the other three that we've looked at so far, Rex subspecies Rex, Rex, Rex subspecies Fiptolactium, and Arizelin. This is Rhododendron Coriaceum, which is not necessarily spectacular in flower. It blooms a bit earlier, still a bit of color here. You can see uh, small white flowers, often in a fairly tight uh, inflorescence more so than this, which can be quite nice. Almost always white with a purple blotch. Much smaller leaves than its three close relatives and a much paler endomentum. But what's great about Coriaceum is when the new foliage comes out, it's like a silvery gray suede. It really is a stunning foliage plant for about a month when that new growth is coming out. The stems and the leaves are just covered with a silvery gray suede endomentum, quite beautiful. Uh, another issue with Coriaceum is it comes from lower elevations in Western Yunnan and Eastern Himalayas and so it's not quite as hardy as a Fictolactium or a Rhododendron subspecies Rex, Rex subspecies Rex. Uh, it's a bit more tender. We're fine with it here in the uh, Puget Sound area, but many people who would be able to grow the other species in marginal areas probably would lose this eventually. So Coriaceum, Coriaceum comes from kind of uh, basically in, you're getting down into the broad-leaved temperate rainforest type environment uh, with Coriaceum. So that concludes our climb of the Rex complex in, uh, in the Big Leaves. And I uh, hope you enjoyed your visit here to the Big Leaf Garden at the Rhododendron Species Botanical Garden. And we'll do another one of these very soon. Thank you for your support.